junior adult black belts class. I'm not training the black belt class, but we are the junior adult black belts. Um, we're doing kickboxing. Today's date is April 22nd. It's your Wednesday class. We're gonna, again, gonna work on the three combinations from a striking standpoint, from a mitt holding standpoint. I'll try to show you different views and angles so that it kind of makes more sense. We're gonna work out a little bit. We're gonna stretch out a lot of it. Um, we're going to just kind of get moving from there. I have the black belt code of the day. Don't worry, I will remember it for the, as in I will say it for the class ends. And get together, bow, welcome, good to see you all. Take your hands, take your side to side, up and down, side to side, roll in a circle, other way, in and out. Left side. That's better. I <laughs> reached down. Okay. Give me one second. We did it. All right. Sit all the way down. Heels, toes touching. Something felt weird. <laughs> Put your left leg out. Stretch down. Again, try to reach and grab your toes. Some of you guys have a lot longer legs than I do, so this may be a, a more difficult venture. Make sure that the goal of grabbing your leg and actually holding onto your foot is to be able to pull your foot back towards you to ensure that your leg is straight. Okay, so if you reaching towards your toes causes the opposite to happen in order to touch your toes, you're kind of defeating the purpose there. So really make sure either reach down and grab if you can. If not, then just kind of get your body leaning forwards to feel the stretch in the back of your legs. Okay, if you want to be a little more advanced, one way to stretch out a muscle a lot easier, okay, and can it increase your stretch naturally is to flex the opposite muscle. So this is what I mean. I'm trying to stretch out my hamstring. So the way I do that, I first have to get my hamstring stretched all the way out. I do that by pulling my toes back to me, making this leg as straight as I can. Okay, the second part of that is by taking the muscle on top and actually squeezing your muscle. Good. Okay, you notice when I do that, what does my heel do? it comes up off the ground, causing my hamstring to naturally stretch itself out more. Okay, so that's one of the easier ways to stretch out your leg, or at least get a more efficient stretch. Switch. And both legs in the front, both legs out. We are also working the, the, the challenge week, challenge where we're doing the full splits, hopefully every single day or some form of stretching every day, not just in class, but outside of class where you can take a little more time and effort into it. As we stretch for three to four minutes, we should be stretching for like nine to 10 minutes. Okay, that's really what your body, want, your body wants and body needs, but I just don't want to put you know a third of the class into just stretching. So we try to be a little more economical with our time and show you some stretches, but these are some things you should be doing for a little bit more time every day. Go over to the left side. Other side. Stretch forward. Keep that body up tall. Stretch your body out.
Over to the left side. One more time. Push your body out more. Other side. Back to the middle. Do it. Reach back. Pull your legs in. Do it. The opposing stretch we're working now. Leg comes in. It's pulling it in nice and tight. Leaning towards it. You're trying to pull it towards you. And then you lean towards it. And switch. Very good. Okay. And all the way up. Ah, 10 jumping jacks. No, you guys are better than that. 25 jumping jacks. Ready? Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Very good. Awesome. So real fast, just jumping into, okay, looking through the bushes. I think everything's up. We're going to do it once facing this way. I'm going to turn and actually do it once facing this way, almost like you're standing behind me in class, just so that as you're doing, you can kind of pay attention to little things like the pivoting, the rotation of the hips and shoulders, the posture, so you can kind of see what the back of you should look like too, All right? So your hands are up. And then combination number 1A, so it's the jab, cross, hook, cross, nice and strong. Hopefully this is getting a little bit easier. Combination number 1B, jab, cross, hook. And remember we started talking about doing the more taekwondo snappy version of the round kick just for now. When we come back in, we have you know, partners to work with on a consistent basis and bigger mitts and bigger pads to hit. Then we can go back to doing the more Muay Thai kickboxing version of the round kick. But for right now, if you'll just work on the snappy version of it, good. And it also helps just kind of stretch your legs out a little bit. And then we're also doing number 1C, which is the jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Ready? So jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Make sure your body's dipping and ripping through that uppercut. So it's one, two, three, shoulders up, drop, uppercut. Nice and strong. And you also have number two, the jab cross and then the shell. Okay, from it. Ready? So it's the one, two, shell. Good. Cross, round kick. Snap it out. Hook, cross, quick switch, round kick. Get that good full pivot through that round kick. Keep those shoulders up. Keep your body hunched. Okay, and you also have, let's do that one actually again, a little bit quicker. Good, so ready, go. Boom, 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 hit, wah, wah, switch. It's okay to make sound effects as you do it, I do it all the time. Okay, and then next up we have combination number three, which is um, the double jab one. Ready, so we're here, number three, double jab, cover, make sure it's not that. Okay, if you should be hiding your vision. So whether you're looking at me or you're doing it to somebody else, when you cover here, that should kind of take out the line of sight of your left eye. Okay, because I'm mirroring you, so you're using your left side for this. So it's the one, two, cover, hide it. Good, tuck it behind here, and your shoulders are up. And then from there, we what? Good, double jab, cross, good. And then hook, cross, back leg, round, right? Okay, let's do it again. Okay, double jab, one, two, cover, cross, hook, good, and then step, it's almost like a fake knee, round kick, boom, nice and strong, cool, so let's do each one of those a little bit faster, ready, and version one with the back leg round kick like normal, ready, go, double jab, cover, cross, hook, back leg round, excellent job, okay, and then the other version, double jab, Cover, cross, hook, step, round. Get your body sideways. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing, but again, you're gonna to face towards me. I'm just gonna face this way. We're gonna all do it the normal direction so you can kind of see what's going on. Everything's hunched up. You can see how my body's not leaned over, but it is kind of postured over here. Ready? And combination 1A, real fast. We're gonna go faster through this. Ready? And go. One, two, three, four. Good, and one B. One, two, three. Four. Notice how your hands need to stay up. You need to use your arms to rotate through that back leg round kick. Now the uppercut, focusing on the dip down, kind of adding a slight pause. And that's kind of the hardest part about this. You guys are very, very good at finding and keeping rhythm and tempo. So that's why all the punches, you notice how they came tempo. Boom, 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 boom. And so we do the uppercut and it throws the tempo off and it kind of feels weird and uncomfortable. So you just add a tempo for the duck. So it's not that we're changing tempo, we're just adding a move to it. So instead of it going one, two, three, change, boom. Now it's just boom, 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 boom. And that 
boom before the uppercut is the drop. So just make that a part of the combination. Good, so it's one, two, three, drop, upper. Okay, instead of, because right now we're all trying to go one, two, three, uh, and make that that. So it's actually, a, let's say it's a five move combo, and then the fourth move in it isn't the uppercut, it's the drop. The fifth move is that uppercut, okay? So ready, and go. One, two, three, drop, upper. Better, hopefully that tempo adjustment makes life a little bit easier. Okay, so now the second one. And jab cross, watch my back foot push backwards, front foot comes with me. So I take the brunt of that, that check, and then I cross, round kick, there's a pivot, hook, cross, switch, round, hand stays up. One more time, jab cross, shell, good, cross, round, hand stays up, hook, cross, lean on that front foot so you can quickly switch, back leg ground, get that pivot off. Last one, double jab, cover, good, cross, hook, round kick, everything stays up, pivot that back foot. Last one, double jab, cover, cross, hook, fake, step, round, nice and tall, cool, excellent job. Then working again from a mid holder standpoint, I'm going to show you guys multiple angles. So this is more, again, I'm going to face this way, which is different than normal, just because if you, even if you don't have your mitts on, if you have your gloves on, try to work it from a mitt holder standpoint, just so you can make sure your angles and your footwork and all the timing stuff is correct, using the correct hand. So I'm going to face this way, but I'm going to try to, now I'm going against the grain a little bit, because normally in class, we keep everything right in front of our body, right? Okay, so you can kind of tell what's going on. I'm going to try to shade everything to the outside of my body a little bit, so that from behind me, you can still kind of see what's going on. Okay, that does mean that's where I want these to go. I still want to go right in front of you, but if I go like this, you can't see through me, so it's kind of hard to see what's going on. So again, like for combination one, if I was facing you, I would be one, two, everything's right in front. Hmm? They can hear me? They can't hear me? Should be good to go. Can you hear me? Can anybody out there hear me? Give me a thumbs up, a like, or a comment. I hope you can. <laughs> it's making the noises. It's doing the things it's supposed to. So I'm going to hope so. In the beginning of the class, I didn't have the mic on. So if there was a comment in the beginning. Now? Maybe now? Yes? We can hear you now. Yay! Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> can you hear me now? Good. All right. I should make a commercial about that. Okay, so from here, ready? So we're on 1A, which is, again, both hands come up, is the jab, the cross, the hook, the cross. And again, make sure if you're the striker, you're waiting for the person to get the mitts there. Okay, and then number two, jab, cross, hook, round kick. Comes down, good? And make sure you're holding for somebody's round kick. It's always a better position to go ahead and turn your body away from it. Good, just because a lot there's a lot more nerves, a little fresher to the surface when you're in the side here. And just if a kick is coming this way to the side, your knee naturally bends like this. So even if they kick you in the back of the knee like that, if somebody they miss really badly, it won't hurt near as badly. If you're in, uh, but if you're here, it would because your knee does not bend that way, right? And so it's just a little bit better from a safety standpoint to turn your body this way as you're doing it, get that foot pivoted as you do it, and kind of lean this way just so that you have more of a surface area. And then if you miss, if they miss, hit you in the bottom, good, there's more padding there than if they hit you in the thigh, that the muscle's a lot fresher, the, all the nerves are a lot closer to the surface, good, and that's why that hurts more. So if you're holding it like this and you're squared up to them and they miss here, that hurts, good. So if they hit here, it's uncomfortable. It doesn't hurt near as bad. So again, it's that one, two, three. Notice how even when I hold the hook, I've already kind of turned my body. So I can then quickly just pop my hand down. So it's boom, boom, turn, down. And my, hand, my, my body's already positioned. Now it's just my hands getting there, right? It's a little trade secret. And last one is the jab, cross, hook uppercut make sure you have a stopping point for that uppercut you're not trying to go all the way down to the floor because you want to kind of start it up tall and then come down you try to cover their eyebrows what i do so you're not going to go that close to them but it should be that one two three cover down good up to kind of so they can see it and also you're giving them time to then duck to get that that lower and that drop right if i go if i just go here and put it straight out good their timing is going to be off when they go down to come up 
So me lifting my arm up gives them time to drop so that when I'm on the way down, they can then come up with the uppercut, right? And then second one is the jab cross shell. So it's just smack, 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 right? It is jab cross shell. So it's the same reach, but I'm not actually hitting the jab. I'm kind of pushing and checking their shell. Good, jab, cross, shell. And after the shell comes the cross. So it's literally just swinging four times. One, two, three, four, which is jab, cross, shell, cross. Then from there, what is it? Good, round kick. Good, so it's also helpful right from here to go ahead and pivot and turn. Boom. But also, again, little trade secrets. When you're going one, two, three, as this one's going to cross, notice what my hand has already done. It's setting up for the upcoming round kick. So that from here, I just have to pivot and get this hand. I'll try to show you from a mirror or just show you from this side. So it's one, two, three. And as you go here, this one comes into, it just flips over and sets on your hip. So that as the round kick comes, I just pivot my feet. This hand's already here, pop, and we're there to go. We're good to go, we're already shingled up. Good, so it's one, two, three, four. Good, and from there, comes down, takes the round kick. Good, or just know that if, you, if that's really complicated, then just know that that's where it's gonna go next, boom. And then you come up, good, and then it's hook. So from here, hook, good, cross, switch, and you need to switch too. Good, so when, you, if, when they're switching to kick, you need to also switch so you can get your body turned to the side. Because if you're here and just try to turn this way, you could still get hit in the front of the thigh if you're uncomfortable. So make sure that you know, if when the person switches feet, the striker, the mid holder should also be switching feet. And that's one of the biggest things to understand when you're mid holding. It's not a passive job. It's not here. I'm not playing patty kick. You're moving. That's why, that's why you and the striker, being the mid holder, the mid holder and the striker should be getting almost as equally as tired because they're both moving just as much. Okay? So from the beginning of that one, Jab, cross, shell, cross. Go ahead and position that hand ready. And then take the round kick, come back up. My body's already this way. So I just pick it up, it turns over, there's the hook. I turn back in for the cross. As they go to switch feet, I also switch feet. And then my hands come down. So it's that cross, switch and turn. You're trying to get my body, especially, specifically, most importantly, that front leg rotated away so I can kind of show my butt and get my hands down. So if they hit, they hit my bottom, not my thigh, and then they, my knee is in a lot more safe position in case, you, again, we're, all, we're never assume, we never expect the worst to happen, but we always prepare just in case if it does. We always assume it's going to be done correctly, but we're prepared in case it does not, right? <clears throat> and so the last one, the double jab cover. So it's the one, two, good, if we're advancing towards, or if they're advancing towards us, it's the one, two, and then I reach, and there's the cover, very good, then from the cover, I pull back, and then smack, that one will also have a little bit different tempo, so if you're the person doing it, instead of going one, two, three, four, it'll be one, two, three, four, hit on the fifth count, let's say, so instead of it being boom, 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 the person holding the mitts needs time to come back to go out, good, their kind of, their five count is one, two, three, four, five. And as a striker, your five count is one, two, three, four, five. Good. Or you can go three, four, back to five. Good. And then from there, it's the hook, then the round kick. So that's the biggest thing with mid-holding and, and striking. And that's why a lot of times I have you guys work with similar partners or like groups that are around your size. And they kind of, I try to frequent the same people, working with the same people is to hopefully then naturally build a tempo because you're not trying to race each other. You're trying, it's like almost like your dance partners. You're trying to work together. You're trying to play at the same speed. Okay, so it should be one, two, smack, four, smack, very good, five. There's the hook and then what comes next? My body's already positioned from the hook. There's the round kick, good. And the last one, here where they step into it, it's the one, two, and of course we have the stationary double jab, which is one, Two. It's not hit this. It's not one, two. As soon as they hit it, you take it away. So it's one, two. So it can be ready to then smack for the cover, pull back, catch it, hook, and they step. When they step with the round kick, as they're stepping, I'm stepping. So as they're stepping, faking the round kick, I step back and I sink. And as I step back and sink, one, two. And we talked about this before, you want to get elbows tight to your body. Okay, so it's not here. This is, this is kind of hard to explain, but it's not this because this can turn into 
this, right? If it's here, this is as far as they'll go. Because that's one of the trade secrets when we're doing board holding stuff for axe kicks is when you're holding it without getting off on a tangent. We're holding for an axe kick. We tuck our elbows into our body because if we just hold it like this, a lot of times it goes like that. But if you tuck your elbows in front of your rib section, it has nowhere to go. And so it's the same concept with this round kick. If you're holding it here, my elbows are in front of me because so that if it hits me, it can't go this way, which just limits the chance of it going like that. Good. So again, you're also making sure that, especially with a back leg round kick, you have to apply what's called active resistance. We've done this with every other strike. With the jab, we don't hold it and then hit it, right? We push it into it so that they're feeling the active resistance. And also from me as a mid order standpoint, I'm not just getting popped the entire time because that's bad for your shoulders. So you're kind of stunting their strike a little bit by punching it with your mitt. Not hard, but just enough to give it some counterbalance. And so when you're holding for that round kick, as it's coming in, you want to push. Not over-exaggerate it. You're just from here. And as you see it coming, you just push your hands out. And when you push, you also flex and lock your arms. There will be some give. It will naturally bounce back a little bit to you. But by dropping and actually pushing into it, and again, flexing your arms real hard, it just it severely decreases the chance of them like striking all the way through and pushing you. If you have passive arms that they're just holding up, you are probably going to get kicked in the face. And so make sure you are pushing away. But again, make sure, notice the location of my hands. Good. And that's why when you're working with the partner, you have to be very specific about where they're striking and kind of go through it slow one or two times to make sure you know exactly where they're kicking or plan on kicking, and you can kind of find that range. Because if you hold it here, just because you haven't gotten low enough, if you're down here and they get super excited like we do when we kick, and they kick higher than normal, that's, I'm not talking to you. Good. <laughs> that's where their face is, right? And so it's the same kind of concept. If I hold it up too high, you get hit in the ribs. You have to kind of find that sweet spot and hide behind your hands and then push your body forward as the strike is coming. And then it's also upon the striker to make sure that they're not over that kicking too hard. And I know we like kicking hard, but you have to kind of be aware that the person holding for you is doing you a favor and make sure that you're not abusing that you know, privilege of having somebody to work with you. And you're, you're being kind of nice to them and you're kick you know, lightly at first and then let them know, Hey, I'm going to kick a little harder this time and slowly pick that power up until a point where you're both ready and you both have that tempo. Okay. So I know okay, we kind of went off on a tangent today and worked a lot more on the mid holding part, but that's the part that we're kind of, We've been lacking a lot in this class. We've done a lot of the striking part to each other. I want to make sure from a middle, because you are graded on both. That the ability to hold mitts, the ability to strike, and both have their purpose, and both are very important um, if you know that they are. So hopefully that will help you do that a little bit stronger uh, and practice that a little bit better. Um, and maybe put some more time and effort into, I know it seems weird, but if you've done to where you're just practicing by yourself and doing your combinations to yourself into the mirror in the bathroom or what, or just in your room practicing, do the same thing with your mitts. Act like there's somebody there punching and be ready to hold those mitts there because being the mid holder, you have to even be a step you know faster, a click faster than the striker because you have to know what's being hit, know what's coming next and go ahead and get that ready. So the, your striker is at the speed of the mid holder. So the better and faster and more capable you are as a mid holder, good, the better that your partner can become. So it's a lot of responsibility. Um, your quote, I didn't forget. Uh, your quote today is one of my favorite ones. Um, it's a Kung Fu Panda quote. The, the Ugwe did not create this quote, uh, but it's still one of my favorites, which is, it's a very quaint little quote, which is the, the past is history. Good. The future is a mystery and every day is a gift. That's why they call it the present, right? And so one more time, good. The past is history. The future is a mystery. Every day is a gift. That's why they call it the present. Very good. I, for me, Ugwe the turtle wrote that quote, but he didn't. Um, it's just a fun quote to just remember to enjoy every day, kind of find the good and the silver lining in tough times and tough things, um, and treat every day as precious as it actually is. Right? So, if you guys are having a wonderful day, I've had a wonderful week so far. We are sending out emails um, about. We're trying to get a lot of you guys that have enough class hours tested just so I can check up and see how you guys are from a rank standpoint um, and see from a class hour standpoint and from a capability standpoint how well you're doing. Um, so we're sending emails out today. If you recently changed your email or if you don't get an email from us today or tomorrow, then please come call us, email us, Facebook us so we can get that handled and figured out for you guys because uh, it may just be wrong in the system or it may have just you know, typed in correctly or it may be have changed or something. Technology is fun. And so if anything has changed or if you, again, if you don't hear from us and you know your students has enough class hours to, to at least get one or two ranked stripes because they have that at least like, you know, six to eight minimum attendance record, you know, since we've gone virtual, please call us or reach out to us so we can then get that figured out for you guys. If you're 
a black red belt, good. You don't have to rank test because you're on a whole different time schedule. If you're a red black belt, or you have a sibling that's a red black belt, like Casey. Good. He's not. I'm not gonna you know zoom him and then talk to you. We talked to you guys last week and we met with you guys last week. And you're not ranked striping yet. You're on your own different schedule, so don't worry about that. So again, black red belts, red black belts. You don't have a Zoom time to rank stripe because we already have met. We've already gone over all the things you guys needed. Um, so there's no stress there. All right. And feet together. Bow. Awesome job today, guys. You are dismissed.